Thanks for staying with us. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us now. Digital natives are generally identified as millennial generation and the generation that come after as of right now. This includes Generation Z and Generation Alpha. These generations have spent nearly um, their entire life surrounded by computers, digital devices, and the world of social media. As young adults, digital natives should be able to use modern technology proficiently to find jobs and um, better prepare themselves for everyday life. Now, digital native professionals are in high demand because they have the skills and knowledge necessary to succeed in the digital world. Now, they are comfortable using digital tools and technologies. They're able to find and evaluate information online and they are able to communicate and collaborate with others using digital tools. Riding the wave of digital transformation can open the doors to global opportunities by accessing careers that have a demand for digital native professionals. So today we are asking how can we become digital native professionals in the era of digital transformation. Now please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 8038463. You can also tweet at us or rather do not X us. <laughs> we'll leave it there. All right, so um, it's all, let me start with uh, what's your name, Jennifer? Yeah, you know, say you, yeah, you, you, are, you are doing, <laughs> you see the way she's smiling and looking at me. Um, you are really, really fully, um, like even your, your <laughs> course in the university and everything was purely, you know, technology and all of that, right? Um, first of all, how, would I say how easy is it right now, you know, to operate, like, full-blown career, to just say, you know what, this is what I want to become and, you know, how is it? Is it is it easy to go into the, the digital space and just play well and do well, or are there other things you need to do? Um, I wouldn't say it's easy, right? Because there are lots of um, parameters and requirements that you need to you need to check off for you to even go or play in those waters, right? Um, so for someone like me who have always being exposed to technology, right? Being exposed to um, courses or even roles in tech, it might be easy for me to switch to from one career path to another within the tech um, space, right? But for someone who is coming from, let's say, a finance background or a commercial background, and you're trying to come into tech, it might not be as straightforward. Or, or yeah, or smooth for you, mm -hmm. because there are things that you need to learn. The truth is, even as um, even as a tech a tech babe, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so even 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 as um, even as a tech a, a tech babe, okay. right? Yeah, I still have to I still have to learn, mm -hmm. right? There are lots of things, loads so and loads of things thing to that learn, me about this right? Thing, because you never will finish read one. Yeah, like another one. So it's almost like you literally have to be constantly learning. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's because that's because technology evolves, right? Mm -hmm. When we started with computer, the the everyday laptop that we have now wasn't what we started off with, mm -hmm. right? We've heard about Abacus, so yeah, things like that. And then even the first computers were really big, mm -hmm. and but now look at it. We have very tiny laptops, and some people even go around with their tablet. I mean, you're just talking about mm -hmm. tablets, and you can move around. Yeah. Some people can actually work from their phone, right? If you have a business, you can generate invoice from your phone. Mm -hmm. You can check your inventory, inventory management, everything because from your phone, system, right? Yeah. yeah, so that's how, that's the trajectory of technology these days. Like, things are changing, things are evolving. Where we are today is not where we're going to be in 10 years to come, right? The knowledge and the skills that you have now will become redundant <clears throat> in the next few years. So you have to keep evolving as tech is evolving. And, um, and the way to evolve is... Yeah, right? right? So the thing is, even if you check a lot of things, like education, now you hear things like, Edutech, right? There's <laughs> agritech, there's yeah. prop tech, which is real estate technology. Mm -hmm. There is there there is there are a lot of things, right? So everyone is is transforming or going 
digital mm. rather because that's like that's what the world is that's right now future. so you have to you just have to make that Absolutely. switch you have to make that change. how are you nj <laughs> i'm great <laughs> how was it for you how easy was it for you to switch mm. into the digital uh, like tech space okay so um well it wasn't it was i would say it was half and half mm. so i came in from the business development angle of it and is more focused on you know, bringing the business up to standards. So whether it's um, finding, uh, finding out from opportunities in terms of um, sales, marketing, all around. So you're looking at um, the digitalization of the organization on its own, how we run our business processes, how processes for even as small as approval, leave, and all those things. The internal structure of um, the needed business, an yes, needed an overhauling and an upgrade. You know, from the times, uh, like, um, you know, Jennifer was saying, from times of Abacus to now, now you're working with, you hear things like AWS, you are, you are working, you know, there are different platforms and different solutions, and the solutions are there to help your business, you know, how you provide these businesses to your client, make it easier, make uh, processing and an, uh, analytics easier for you. So right now, from the business angle, there's a part called, you know, is digital natives. There's the digital natives business, which is where you use new solutions and new technologies in order to change how you mm -hmm. offer your service to your clients and even the product, the kind of products and services that you offer. So there is always constantly a need for you. For me right now, is interesting and exciting because in technology, there's always something for you to learn. I'm dealing with almost about, what, over 50, between 50 and 100 solutions. And you have to be on top of all of them. And you're, you know, you're talking to people in different industries. And you have to always know what solution they require in order to, you know, be able to um, run their, their digitalization properly. Okay. So it's crazy. Absolutely. Let yeah. me bring in our guest, Sally Oko. <laughs> I hope I pronounced it right. Started her career in retail okay. sales and management and transitioned into the education sector where she serves as the head of marketing, admissions, and communications at Bridge House um, College, Ikoi. In recent years, Sally has made a significant impact um, in the exciting field of edutech. <laughs> edtech. <laughs> she serves as a regional communications manager at Nexford University and a leading um, American-based mm -hmm. online university where she played a critical role in expanding the university's brand and presence in Nigeria. Sally is currently the community development manager at Nexford University where she leads the development an execution of stakeholders' engagement events and partnerships in Nigeria. And we're really honored to have her with us in studio. Hi, Sally. Hi, thank you for having me here today. Um, it's a pleasure to be here to contribute to this topic. Yes, yeah, so. And it's one that's close to my heart. I can see because <laughs> I, I, I saw you nodding and nodding. Uh, both of them were talking. You are a marketing person, so I can imagine how you're saying, yeah, you're saying all the things you have to say. But hey, like literally, right? Um, yeah. I think it was our generation that we got mm -hmm. the millennials were the ones that got introduced into it. Um, technology, technology and all of that but yeah. we're seeing that you know i mean there's a video is it is it a google video now i'm not sure of a baby in the delivery room i don't know if you've seen that video it's so it's so funny i've watched it several times oh, the one that the baby comes out the with the baby comes, comes out, out with, the, with the and collects the mother's That's phone google how to cut so he cuts his own um, um, umbilical cord, cord. Cord. Yeah. took a phone made a phone call you know, like this selfie, selfies you know, this and all that and like yeah. literally like it might be a, it might be funny but you but see that's the that's, that's the era we're yeah. in like literally Everybody right now, no. if you are not immersed in technology, technology yeah. you will truly become redundant, redundant, right? So how is it, first of all, how easy is it for people, right, to say, okay, you know what, I have done this career for, let's say, 20 years, what do I do next? You understand, what should they be looking out for in terms of, okay, trying to transition into a more digital native professional, right, so that you can be, yeah. stay Relevant, relevant because that's the future how easy is that one number one number two for people that are already in the space yeah. i feel like it's just too much like today i was online learning different things <laughs> like you need to literally so is it not too much you know where do we say okay no 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 i think i've i've learned enough 
is there ever going to be that time <laughs> at this digital age? Is, there gonna, is that going to happen? So maybe you start with the first question. Um, okay, so I'll start with the first one. Um, you know, when people talk about how difficult it is to get into technology, I say the first thing you need to know is this. Don't resist it. Mm. Once you build that resistance, um, whether mentally or otherwise, you're going to have challenges. So the thing is this, embrace technology. Because with or without you, it's here to stay. With or without you participating in it, that's the future. So just embrace the change and flow with it. Um, so yes, millennials didn't grow up with technology, but they adapted to technology. Mm -hmm. And people might say, oh, well, I'm past that age. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not too young to start learning stuff. But the whole nature of man is one of continuous learning. Yeah. The day you stop learning is the you day you die. Yes. Yeah. 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 So um, embrace technology. See it as another language you want to learn. That's how I put it. Um, it's not something to fight. It's not something to get scared of or get overwhelmed. Start Take it in little bits. You don't have to know anything, everything at once. You don't have to do everything at once. Mm. Start with taking very little bite-sized courses. Start with, you know, and then find out, for you to really embrace technology, I'll say find out how you learn best. Mm. Do you like videos or do you prefer reading materials? Do you prefer listening? And that's the beauty of technology. All, All these mm -hmm. learning styles. styles are available. Mm. You're not limited, unlike the traditional experience where yeah, just you have to sit form. down and just go to listen to one mm. person talk. So that's the beauty of technology. You can actually harness the power of technology to suit your own style. Mm. So the second question was, so for mm. people that are already in the mm. system, right, mm. how do you keep up and where do you draw the line because? <laughs> because, like, literally, my sister just graduated from next world, interestingly, oh, right? Congratulations yeah. to her. In fact, and I meet Ella, I she good oh. <laughs> You know, and, and the interesting thing is, she said, mm. what? So I was talking to her today. I said, oh, Faith, I just saw one call. You know, say, you say you want to do AI, one thing, one thing. Yeah. She said, ah, I'm not there. I said, I do like this. I'm ready to many things. <laughs> <Faith laughs> to my brain. Like, literally, she's, oh, and yes. she is, she's not someone that is, she loves. The, the, she loves, she's, she's been, you know, the people they loves call it people. You know, so she loves to learn naturally. Yes. But now, what she's done, like in recent time, I think for three, mm. four years now, she's been intentional about Absolutely. moving herself from, what's it called, just being hardcore oh. learner yeah. to yeah. now a digital so, professional, professional in okay. her field. She's in the finance space, right? So she, so she takes courses, deliberate, she's doing, she's done data analytics, yes. data, she's so... She's doing everything she feels like this will be the thing that would now eventually now put me in yeah, so that she in the positions herself, herself for the future. But I feel sometimes like it can be overwhelming. Like, do you li read literature? But you know you cannot tell somebody to draw the line. So it's not your telling. It's online learning. Um, so, <laughs> but tell me how to manage it, though. <laughs> so I, I think what you should do here is not. So sometimes when you look at a problem, you, see, you want to look at everything at once. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you're going to get discouraged. Narrow your vision. Focus is important. What your sister did is fantastic. She honed in on um, her, her experience, and she said, look, I want to go further in this experience and become a digital native at, this, mm -hmm. at it. So, but, you know, if you're trying to do everything at once, you're hearing people talk about UI, UX, you're hearing coding, <laughs> you're hearing this, and, you know, um, digital marketing, software development, you have, to, you have to know yourself and, and then tell yourself which of these areas, where do you want to fit in? Mm -hmm. Because you have to find your niche. You can't be everywhere, right? So that, that's the first thing to do so it doesn't overwhelm you. And then take it in bite-sized courses. Mm -hmm. Just take, try taking one course at a time. And, you know, yes, that's what we sell, but the way we go about it we also try not to overwhelm you. Pre pace yourself and do not compare yourself. Technology has made it so easy that you, you, you are literally in competition with yourself and not with the next person. So d don't um, try to do everything at once and don't listen to the marketplace. 
Ah, you know what? Hold that thought. But let's just go in. Let's just go in and out of the right back because let's go out. We'll come back. Alright, so if you just <laughs> if you just tuned in, uh, becoming a digital native professional in the era of um, digital transformation—that's the conversation we're having, and we have Sally with us. Yeah, we're already having fun. Um, so you you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero one eight zero three eight four six six three. So uh, please, people should pardon me. You see that marketplace <laughs> you said before we went on a break? Yeah. Because now every time I see a lot of people going to like global standards, so they are yeah. comparing based on okay. Project managers have been paid X, Y, Z. Business developers have been paid this. So people now are learning based on, on. earnings. Yeah. Is that a good thing? Um, so uh, it depends on what kind of person you are. And that's why I say do not listen to the noise in the marketplace. If you leave your house, um, let's say you want to buy groceries, and you leave your house and go to the market and hear somebody shouting, selling clothes, are you going to abandon the groceries you wanted to buy to go for clothes? Mm. That's the sign of an undecided mind. So you need to filter out the noise and find out wh where you want to go. Please. So the, 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 the first thing in going anywhere is to know where exactly you want to go and being focused on that journey. Mm. But if you just have, if you wake up and you say, oh, I want to go to Surulere. Where is Surulere? Oh, I don't know. It means that you're going to end up anywhere in Surulere. But if you say, oh, I want to go to Adenro and Gunsonya, you have a destination in mind. You use your map to tell you how to get there. And that's how you should, embrace, that's how you should figure out your digital path. Mm. Think of where you want to be. Don't look at, I don't think you should. Yes, it's good to know what salaries are saying in the industry. But are you cut out to be a data analyst? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have a love for figures? Mm -hmm. You could be a creative. Not everybody has to be um, a coder. Not everybody has to be a software developer, even though the salaries are very attractive. But who says creatives are not making money with technology? Mm. They're making a lot of money as well. So just research, do your research, find out what works best and what aligns with your goals and then your method of learning and stick to that. Absolutely. You would always evolve, of course, because technology is evolving. Mm -hmm. But at least you have a, you have a, a, a map, clear path. a road so map. Exactly. In that path. Out. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jennifer. So talking about, <coughs> sorry, talking about learning, right? Um, yeah. How can a person foster a culture of continuous learning, especially with the uncertainty of um, of technology and how it's constantly evolving. changing? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's a very good question. Um, at Nextford, we don't call uh, we don't call them students. We call them learners, and that's because we believe learning is lifelong. Mm -hmm. It never stops. If you call yourself a student, at some point you're going to stop being a student. Mm -hmm. But if you're a learner, you're going to keep learning. So the thing is this: you um, you know you have to prioritize your learning. What do you want to learn? How? When, give yourself a goal. Oh, I want to become X, Y, Z. How long does it take? How long is the average time it takes to reach that goal? Okay, maybe I have this other commitment. I'm going to set this target for myself. If other people are doing it in three months, maybe I will take four or five months to do it. But at the end, I'm going to get to where I'm going to. So that's how you should approach it, right? And that's why you have to choose a model that is flexible for you a model that works for you, that is not necessarily a competitive model where everybody has to do everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, my question would be, okay. you know, you said a, a, a bit about next board. Hmm. Who are your target audience? Okay. And the courses that you, where, if someone wants to just, you just come out of uni yeah. and you're looking for how to upgrade yourself, because you're not sure where, what part you want to take, but you want to be, you know, digitally, you know, savvy. savvy yeah. That's the word. Where do you start from? First of all, who are your target audience? Okay. Then, 
as an individual who is just starting out, where do you start from? What kind of courses do you start with? Oui. How do you, you know, some people are doing, you know, pro, uh, product management, project management, business analysts, data analysis. Where do you start from? Where's the best place advisable to start from so that you don't jump into something that you're not, you're, you're, ready for. yeah, you're not ready for on the other side because there's the, you know, there's the theory part and there's the practical. Like you were saying, if you don't like numbers, why do a data analysis just for the money? Because eventually you get tired of it, and then there will be no further learning from there. Yeah. Okay, um, so to answer your first question, who are our target audience? So our target audience are young to, you know, any age, <laughs> as long as you're willing to learn. Um, Nigerians, I'm using this in the Nigerian context now. Mm -hmm. Who um, you know they 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 are they are bold. They want to take a different path. They are ambitious as well. So these are people who are let's say between the ages of eighteen mm. to any age. Um, that you know we, we don't set a cap on learning. Yeah. That's up to you. So um, whoever is interested that has that skills. Now I'm talking about where do you start from. That's the beauty of Nextford. You finish from secondary school, you want to do a bachelor's degree with Nextford. We're not just going to throw you into the deep waters. Get this, so that there's a course with our undergraduate classes called the Science of Happiness. Mm -hmm. Would you ever think you would find a course like that related to business and technology? No, mm -hmm. the traditional experience, you'd not do something like that. But we've got something like that at Nextford because we want to prepare your mind. We want to prepare you for the journey. And okay. when our undergraduates take this course, the feedback I've gotten from them is really interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, it opens their mind, it opens their hearts. So it prepares them for whatever else is coming along the way because you need to figure out your internal state and you need to get mentally prepared for the journey. So that's one thing you start with. So you're not just going off the deep end or you're just graduating from high school and then we throw you into uh, product management. Again, um, our tech courses are tied to our business courses. So you would start gradually. You'd pick up the pace um, as time goes on. You're going to start with things that are familiar to you. You're not mm. just going to just get thrown into the deep end and then you're struggling. You have no idea on the first day what's happening. You know, that's not um, how it's done. Okay. Mm. So do, do this, sorry, do this, um, the courses, Yeah. Do they, can they uh, be like, uh, are they a replacement or will I say a substitute mm. for um, the courses that you study in Nigerian universities? Or is looked at from a higher learning, yes. Or is complimentary looked, or is something that you, you can... You can, you can, you can actually, actually like a first... They that's are the word, stand absolutely standalone courses. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So let me explain our model to you. Um, we were built on the course of, okay, traditional education hasn't changed in the past 100 years. Yeah. But the workplace has changed so drastically. Now, education is lagging behind the workplace. And that's why we get employers saying, oh, they have so many graduates, but they cannot, they cannot employ, employ them. them. They're unemployable. They're unemployable. Yeah. So that's a huge challenge. And that was the challenge we set out to tackle from the beginning. Mm. So our curriculum, the entire curriculum, was built from an industry perspective. Mm. We spoke to 5,600 top employers from around the world mm. to find out what skills were in demand, what skills were in shortage, what skills did they wish that people that were fresh from school had. And then we built all this into our learning. So next four um, programs are, it's a full degree. And anyone who has undergone ha. a course at next Don't worry, she's starting the idea. <laughs> <laughs> this question would she not would, come exactly, up Exactly, it wouldn't need to her. come up. <laughs> Please <laughs> do. Please do. Jennifer, you want to come Yeah, in. so I'm glad you started talking about skills because um, okay. that brought me to my next um, question, right? All um, right. So what are the skills and competencies um, <clears throat> one needs to acquire or enhance in order to thrive in this era or space that we're well, in currently. Yeah, what, are, what are the employers? Those five yeah. thousand that you talk about. Yeah. 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 Six hundred, yeah. Okay. Um so there, there, there it's a mixture of both soft skills and hard skills. 
And on the soft skill side, the common one we hear them say is effective communications. Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised how much that is a challenge um, for graduates. People think they communicate well until, you know, it turns out they don't. So communication skills is a top, is top priority. Problem solving skills and critical thinking. These are very essential skills for you to thrive in the workplace because it means that you come ready to be able to adapt. And to also contribute to, to add value, exactly. To add value. Because a lot of people go into employment waiting to just receive Rece salaries at the end exactly, of the month. Exactly, without any value add. not think no, value how to, adding. Yeah, how to get yeah. back. Yeah. Go ahead. Exactly. If, if you have critical thinking skills, you'll mm. be able to figure out how your role impacts the entire organization. Absolutely. And once you are cognizant of that fact, you, 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 you will do better. Better, yeah. do better. Exactly. Absolutely. So, but if you don't understand how your role contributes, you, there's a strategy and you feel, oh, that's, that's the that's end. The so it end. doesn't concern me. You know, I'm just the receptionist. I don't know what's going on there. So th that's really where... So problem solving and critical thinking skills are very important. Also, how do you problem solve? There's an issue. Do you only just escalate it, you know, without figuring it out? So these are critical soft skills. Now, for the hard skills, we now come to things like, you know, um, being able to analyze data, being able to use data in your work, um, being, uh, being able to um, present information in a way that is concise, that is, um, you know, that, that is clear, oh, yeah. exactly. Bullseye. Without Thank you, that's the word, <laughs> bullseye, you know, without, without um, bringing fatigue to whoever has to digest oh, yeah. your that's information. True. Exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, it, it's a mixture of both um, soft and hard, and hard skills. skills. Fantastic. So, I know, I'm sure, Sally, you had something in mind that you wanted to say <laughs> when you were coming, <laughs> driving all the way to this, um, to this studio when the topic, of course, yeah. was raised. And, you know, what was that one thing you wanted to leave in the minds of people? Um, why is it important for you to become a professional native? Um, what's it called? Digital native. Why is it important? Because... <laughs> the world is, <laughs> in fact, <laughs> the things that I learned, interesting thing is I've done project management in 2012. Okay. Pro yeah, project management in okay. 2012. What I'm reading now is completely world apart. apart yeah. But if I go back to my university where I studied physics, <laughs> yes, I studied physics, yeah. and I go back and go and start from 100 level, I can bet you is what I learned Le in in uh, 2001, what, that I entered the university, there. <laughs> is what I will still go and meet there. Um, so the digital space is very different. different. Very, very Absolutely. different. So what did you have in mind? You know, to say, you know what, if I don't say anything, this mm -hmm. I must leave with the mind of anybody that is watching. Mm -hmm. So they understand how critical. Because you can't just wake up. You see the book, Who Moved My Cheese, Cheese right? Yeah. He, the mouse was talking, talking, talking. Things was changing. Changing around him. But it refused to change. Thing, yeah. Now I woke up in the morning and so, ah, ah. Where did the cheese, cheese go, to? go to? It's been going. <laughs> but you refuse you to see. Yeah. And that's what is happening in the digital world, world. right? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of transformation is happening. happening. Yeah. Do you understand? Things that you never have considered to be to be relevant that's, yeah. that somebody can decide how to reconstruct <laughs> this class you understand and say you know what let's move this line here is a skill now that people are now taking and you know earning so if you had that one thing to say to someone yeah. of okay. the importance of just change whatever it is that and you can become a, 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 a digital it's native in yeah. any field, field. that mm -hmm. you're in what would be that thing you say to that person okay um what i would say goes back to my first sentence embrace the change with or without you it's going to happen mm. so to avoid being a dinosaur you just have to embrace that change and harness the potential so the thing is people say it as oh technology for work but if my current job doesn't require technology why am i bothered but th there's a, the, you know we, we've done lots of studies on this because we are very focused on preparing our graduates for the future of work, mm. not about yesterday's job or today's job, was going to be relevant, yeah. relevant in the next five to ten years. Mm. And it's interesting how a lot of things have come up, the kind of you know, things that will be faced out. Mm. So if you do not get yourself ready for that, you're going to, like the mouse, like you said, you know, <laughs> things are already happening. They're in motion. 
whether you can see them or not. But if you don't get yourself into that space, then you're going to find yourself becoming redundant. So I would say look at technology from a place of empowering yourself for both personal and professional development. Mm. You can use it, embrace it in your daily life. Start with the personal development, you know, before you even go into professional development. And then it becomes easier as you go with time. So the one thing I want to say is this. Please, it's absolutely important that we become digitally fluent mm. in order not to get left behind. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have comments? <laughs> <laughs> well, she has said it all. She has said it all. You don't want to be left behind. You know, it's, it's, it's scary. Um, so my son recently graduated from secondary school. And before they graduated, I had told them, say, me, it's I use calculation. <laughs> I said, I have Googled basic salary, baseline salary for UX designers. <laughs> I mean, a salary, a marketplace. But because I know that they have the capacity City, for yeah. coding and all those stuff, because they yeah. are very, very, you know, very, like, yeah. driven in that mm. terms of technology. And, you know, every day I'm so happy that I forced them to do it. Because now they are studying, you know, courses online, and you know preparing for the university okay. and you know so yeah. you are going into the university is different you're going to be different from your classmates yeah. that are just going fresh from you know because now you have a skill, skill. Yeah. right so now imagine you know if we as even as adults because there's literally no field right now no. yeah. even if it is hair salon yep Absolutely. do you know how much trichologists are collecting making i run mm -hmm. away <laughs> I went to meet a tricolor. I said, this is my front. I just okay. want the head to, to come up. <laughs> I'm up. By the time they did the analysis, they did the whatever, brought the machine, did the scanning. $5,000. Yeah. I say, you say what? <laughs> you know, but literally, there is no single... I, I went that basic. Yeah. You understand? Even yeah. if it is your nails. nails. There yeah. is a technology oh, that has made nail whatever Fresh, yeah. different. Yeah. And not only that you now earn bigger income because you yeah. adopted that technology. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. So my question, my final question would be to you. Mm. You know, how can we, because I've seen your courses, they're a bit limited, right? Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll get to that point Why I say it's a bit limiting mm. in my head. Because literally, what mm. I just said now, mm. the every field yeah. requires technology. Absolutely. So how can we adopt more um, technological solutions, mm. like in bite-side courses that can cater. So if, for instance, I have a stylist. Mm. I say, come, come, come. There's this course that these people are offering. Go and take it. Are you people looking into like that kind of massive mm. expansion? expansion? Yeah. Um, so absolutely, um, at, at the core of what we do is innovation at mm. Nextford University. So we're always innovating and iterating with the marketplace, and which is why we've recently launched our master's in digital transformation. Awesome. Um, so we keep um, evolving. We keep trying to find out what skills will be needed, and we keep building our courses, and that's a huge advantage for us. Mm -hmm. um, so I would not say we're limited, because um, a traditional university, for example, would need to invest thousands of millions of naira or thousands of dollars to change in their library. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. why you find out if you go back to your university, it's still the same library, still the but same. it's expensive. Exactly, mm -hmm. to change. Mm -hmm. But with our online courses... We can update it. We can update it faster, mm -hmm. you know, as fast as you can think of. So that means that as you're learning, you are confident that you're getting the latest. Mm -hmm. So um, digital transformation is a key aspect for us. And we know that, yes, that's all encompassing. So it's so broad. broad. It's very broad. It's okay. not something that is limiting. I mean, it's just today, to any I was reading about this Nigerian company, this, um, you know, some ladies that decided to, you talked about hair. Mm. Mm. They want to be making lab-made human hair. Mm. Mm. And I thought to myself, oh, that's awesome, mm -hmm. you know, because that, that's a huge area, you know, for, yeah. for us. they will not be cutting people's hair <laughs> in one temple in India anymore. <laughs> exactly. Mm. So, yes. Okay. Technology so is So digital transformation covers that entire, all, all those sectors I'm talking about. So if you think digital transformation, yes. you know, because, again, this, like, ties back to what Angie had asked about yeah. guidance, where to, yeah. you know. All right. 
Okay, so I think do um, you have comments? <laughs> okay. I thought we I thought I heard something. But we've out of we've run out of time. <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much, Sally. We had fun with you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Sally. and I did <laughs> too. Thank you very much. All right, so before we go, go and learn a course today. <laughs> uh-huh. Let me say that one first. Make sure you follow us across all our social media platforms. Listen to our podcast on Spotify. You can also share the links as well. Share with families and friends and like, share, and engage us on social media. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. It says, Digital natives are the first generation to grow up with the internet and digital technology. They are used to being connected all the time and to having access to information at their fingertips. This has shaped their way of thinking and learning. Ah. (laughs) Don't worry. We millennials, we are coming up. We will survive. (laughs) We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao. (laughs)